Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. I've already put in a bit of time this week working on Athena's hull. In preparation of painting the hull, I sanded away the blue stripe, and in that process I found a lot of smaller scrapes and dings. Yesterday I fared all of those minor areas, so I think I am pretty close to having the hull be ready for paint. But there is one major job still on the to-do list. And that is to round over the very sharp edge here on the deck hull joint. A few weeks back I laid up a bunch of glass to seal the deck hull joint, and this is what it looked like before I started applying fairing compound. My plan was to make sure that the vertical surface was perfect, then the horizontal surface, check that they meet in a nice sharp edge, and then worry about rounding that edge over. This is a little bit scary because I'm gonna have to do this by hand. As you can see here, it's almost a 90 degree corner, but out by the bow of the boat, it's a lot less than 90 degrees. If it had just been 90 degrees all the way, I could just have used a round over bit for my router and it would have been very easy to get a consistent rounded over edge. I've got two different strategies for how I'm gonna go about rounding over this corner. And I don't know which one is best because I've never done it before, but uh, we'll find out. This represents a cross section of the hull as it is right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line on the top side and on the hull side. And then I'm gonna remove this chunk of material here, leaving me with two relatively sharp edges here. And then I'm gonna round those over until it's a nice smooth radius. The first couple of steps, drawing the lines and removing that first initial chunk of material is gonna be the same for both strategies. But after that, I can either use my boards from Flexi Sander here to round over those two corners, or I can go with something like these pipes here. The idea being to cut a chunk out of one of these that matches the radius I want, line that with sandpaper, and then use that to form the radius. If I go with just using these boards for rounding over that corner, I actually don't want them to be flexible. I think that would be very unfortunate. The boards come with these aluminum profiles to remove the flex in them. Now they're just nice and flat and not the least bit flexible. I expect NASA will be calling any minute now to get their hands on this amazing tech. I've made three little doohickeys for striking lines on the hull because I think I might need more than just the two lines. But uh, yeah, I'll start out using the board method and uh, let's see how that goes. As per my little drawing, I'm gonna start out by removing a chunk to half this sharp corner. I'm also gonna strike a second line a little bit further in. That's gonna help guide me when I wanna break those 45 degree corners in half. With lines stricken all the way along the hull, it is now time for the scary bit. It is time to start removing material. And for that, I am going to be using my random orbital sander before switching to the boards. Any sandpaper would do, I guess, but I'm using this Apronet stuff in an 80 grit. All I want to do now is just to remove this corner here. I want to sand until I get to the first line on the horizontal surface and the first line on the vertical surface. That is the bulk of the material removed. As you can see, it looks pretty neat. I did find a couple of voids in the fairing compound, but that's not a big deal. I can easily fix that after I'm done rounding it over. And I'm gonna use my third pencil tool to give myself another couple of guidelines. This is the last bit of sanding I'll use my random orbital sander for. I just need to remove the material between this line and this line and the same down here. So far, so good. You might just barely be able to see the top line up here, the next one down here, there's a shadow of the next one there, and then the bottom one down there. The next step is to take the long board and just round over this. It 
might not have looked like much on camera, but my poor, poor software developer arms are beat. The good news is that both sides of the hull are done and it's looking pretty good. I can't see any obvious big mistakes, but we really won't know until I'm done painting the hull. Even though it might sound like complete insanity, I still want to take the longboard to both sides of the hull just to make sure I haven't missed anything. But yeah, I'm gonna hold off until this afternoon to get started doing that. While the weather is still nice and dry, there are some things I'd like to check off the to-do list. For one, I wanna apply copper coat to the areas of the hull that still need it. That's important before she can go back in the water. I wanna do that tomorrow because that's gonna be an all day thing. But today I would like to apply another coat of paint in the cockpit locker. These two holes up here are for the through holes that are gonna connect to the cockpit drains. And the only thing keeping me from permanently mounting these is just a little bit of painting. Unfortunately, that little bit of painting needs to happen inside of a very tight and awkward space. As you can see, I've already primed in here and I've gotten the first coat of top coat on. Because of the tight space in here, I can only paint half of the locker at a time. But I'll just keep plugging away and then it'll get done. I think just one more coat later tonight and that's going to be good enough for a cockpit logger. Don't worry about that piece of wood looking a little bit shabby. That is going to get removed and replaced with some more substantial backing for the wind vane. I just need a hand to be able to remove the wind vane. Yesterday afternoon I gave my tired, tired software developer arms a little bit of a break by removing the yellow stripe that was up here on the hull. I don't know what kind of paint they use, but it clogged up the sandpaper something fierce. So it ended up taking just about two hours to take care of the starboard side. After that, it was on to longboarding the starboard side of the hull, which I spent the rest of the day doing. And I used the evening light to check my work and I did find five or six areas that needs just a dab more fairing compound. According to the weather forecast, I've only got another two days without rain this week. So I want to hurry up and also take care of the port side. I don't think it's the case here, but let's say you suspect there is a low spot here and you just want to check. Well, maybe sometimes you can kind of see it if you look at it from the side or you can maybe feel it. But if you want to make sure, you can either use guide coat, which is a powder you apply. You can use a little bit of primer and then paint it and sand it to see if you remove all of that primer or you just grab your trusty old pencil and just draw a bunch of lines. As you can see, there's no more pencil lines here, so this should be nice and flush, except for, of course, this little shiny area here, which needs more fairing compound, but uh, I'll just go ahead and mark that with my pencil and I can apply a little bit of fairing compound. Now, there's not a lot to this, although keep in mind, I do not claim to be any kind of an expert, but all I'm doing is just long diagonal strokes in both directions. And uh, well, that is basically it. As you can see, there are still a couple of spots that needs just a dab more fairing compound, but uh, we're getting there. This is what I referred to when I said guide coat. It's a black powder that you apply with this sponge and it serves the exact same purpose as the pencil. I'm gonna save this stuff until I think the hull is perfect because that way I maximize the soul crushing experience of figuring out I still have more fairing and sanding to do. Oh, but seriously, this stuff does make a giant mess when I use it. So yeah, I'm just gonna hold off a little bit. It's the next day. Yesterday I finished sanding the port side of the hull. There are, of course, just a few places that need just a dab more fairing compound. After that I applied the last coat of paint in the cockpit locker and I got the galley all sanded and ready for paint. I still need to trim these, but these are the pieces of trim that's going to go around the knee and also cover up the chain plate back here on the main bulkhead. As you can see, the one on the main bulkhead doesn't quite cover this ugliness down here, so I'm going to have to just fair that a little bit. Yesterday, I also laid up the last bit of glass on this area here, an opening from an old port light. So this is also ready for a fairing compound. 
Today is gonna be a little bit of a mixed bag because today is supposed to be the last dry day I'm gonna get this week. So I wanna make sure that I get as much fairing compound applied as I can. I also wanna get these two through holes installed so that the cockpit can actually drain when the rain comes. And I wanna get that copper coat applied. The areas that still need copper coat are the areas where the stands were located when we applied the first round of copper coat. So let's go ahead and get this prepped for copper coat. Applying the copper coat is gonna take five or six hours because it needs to go on wet on tacky. So I need to finish it today. So what I'll do is I'll apply the first coat, then I'll go do something else. And then in maybe 30 minutes, an hour, I'll check back and see if it's ready for the next coat. Of course, I can't mix up an entire pack of copper coat right away. So I've picked up some little shot glasses for metering. From what I found online, the mix ratio is one to one to one by volume. So let's go ahead and get this mixed. Parts A and B get mixed thoroughly before adding the copper. I think I've mixed a little too much copper coat here because uh, those are some pretty small areas, but that's okay. I've got plenty of copper coat and I can always mix up less for the next batch. The first coat is gonna look horrible, but that's perfectly normal. I've set a timer for 20 minutes because it's a very warm day today and I just wanna make sure this stuff doesn't get away from me because like I said, it needs to go on wet on tacky. I've also rinsed my little mohair roller here so I should be able to use this for the rest of the coats. I might as well take advantage of those 20 minutes and apply a little bit of fairing compound. I'm glad I set my timer for 20 minutes because if I had set it to 30, then I would have been too late. That was a little too close for comfort. Now, if memory serves from when we cover coated the entire hull, the first coat did seem to dry a little bit quicker than the subsequent coats, but I've set my timer again for 20 minutes and I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on it because I don't wanna mess this up. Well, it's been another 20 minutes and we're ready for the third coat. So this is gonna take a lot less time than I thought. I've got five coats on here already, and uh, as you might be able to see, and here, we're ready for the sixth and final coat. Kind of been cursing the weather these last few days because it's been so warm and sweaty, but it looks like it finally paid off. That's it, one more small, but very important step to getting Athena back in the water, done. There are a couple of reasons why I'd like to temporarily remove the wind vane. For one, it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to paint the hull, but also the wood that's used in here for adapting to the shape of the hull, it's not looking that great. Somebody tried their very best to turn this bolt into some sort of rivet, which is kind of annoying. Ah, there we go. This thing might not look like it, but it weighs a freaking ton. This is a hydro vane. It's a type of wind vane. This is a mechanical device that will steer the boat at a set angle to the wind. So it's a way of steering the boat without having a human do it or electronics do it. Wind vanes are well known for being hyper expensive and this thing is thousands and thousands of dollars. So uh, while I've got it down, I might as well just reach out to Hydrovane to see if there's anything I need to change or service. Here is that wood I mentioned that didn't look so great. And there's also a bunch of corrosion happening in here. So yeah, it'll be fun to take this apart. Look at that stainless threaded rod in all of that aluminum. That is going to be a right pain in the behind. The very last thing left on my to-do list before I'm ready for the impending rain tomorrow is to get these two through holes mounted so I can drain the water from the cockpit. I think I've got a little dab of 591 that's still usable in this cartridge here. And that's not a bad choice for bedding those through holes. So this is what I'm gonna use. To tighten the through holes, I've made myself this little piece of highly specialized wood that fits in here. It's gonna lock in place so I can keep this stationary while I tighten everything down. I've taped off everything to minimize cleanup. So let's just apply plenty of goop. Most of this is gonna squeeze back out, but that's perfectly okay.
that was delightfully cramped and awkward, but both of them are now installed. Now there's just the small matter of the cleanup. The very last thing I did yesterday was to assemble all of the winches I took apart a few weeks back. They look a little bit shabby, but they're all in perfectly serviceable order. Right now I'm about to trim the trim for the galley so that I'm sure it's going to be a nice snug fit. A little bit of cleanup on this uh, now somewhat jagged edge back here is going to be required, but it should all end up looking pretty dang spiffy. Yep, this thing is pretty much perfect. I've repeated that process for the piece of trim that's gonna go on the main bulkhead. Yep, I think that is gonna look pretty dang spiffy. These are now ready for varnish. Now the only thing standing between me and being able to paint the galley is just a little bit of sanding back here on this fairing compound. Story of my life. As you might be able to tell by the shiny area right here and also down here, yes, I need more fairing compound. That might actually be for the best because I just checked and in a few hours, a whole heap of these things are gonna show up. These are little lucky latchy doodads for the drawers and for the cabinet doors. And I would like to get that figured out before I start painting. I want all of these here before I start drilling holes in the cabinet doors and drawer fronts because I put a lot of time into them and I wanna make absolutely sure that these are not slightly different than the ones that are showing up. That would be so annoying. And speaking of the cabinet doors, I might not be cash rich, but at least I'm not hinge poor. These were supposed to be all of the hinges for the cabinet doors, but apparently somebody at Vatsky doesn't know how to count to eight because there's only seven here. I'm planning on varnishing everything next week, so if I could get my hands on the missing one before next weekend, that would be awesome. But other than that, it's not a big deal. Ta-da! All of the hyper expensive, super shiny Chinesium plastic anybody could ever want. These things are ridiculously overpriced. They're over $20 a piece, but at least I've got enough here for all of the galley. I've checked and these are the same outer diameter. That was what I was waiting to see. So I've gone ahead and made myself two little jigs that are gonna help me drill consistent holes in the drawer fronts and cabinet doors. It looks like the diameter here is 25.3 millimeters. That's about an inch. So I've picked up two Fastener bits, one that's 25 millimeters and one that's 26 millimeters. So let's see which one of these is the best fit. This is the uh, 25 millimeter hole. Now let's see what the 26 looks like. The 25 is too tight, it won't fit. And the 26 is, well, perfect. They might be 100% plastic and ridiculously overpriced, but once they're installed, they actually feel kind of nice. We might as well just give this a go. I've used my jig to mark the position on the first set of cabinet doors, so uh, fingers crossed. I'm excited to see how this is gonna play out because I really hope I've left enough room here on the inside for this nut. Well, it looks like this is all gonna work out. This is pretty cool. I'm gonna add a little piece of hardwood on the inside of the cabinet here so that this becomes a nice snug fit. And also so that this little latchy doodad down here has something a little bit more substantial to rub up against than just this plywood. If you close the cabinet and you depress this little thing here, then the latch is locked and the cabinet won't open. So that's what's gonna keep the cabinets and the drawers closed. I think it's a pretty neat solution. Maybe visually it would have looked better if these were centered, but that would mean having some kind of strip of wood in here, which would cut the 
access to this storage in half. And I don't want that. And that's also why I didn't want to go with sliding doors or one of those rolly uppy type doors. The way the little jig here works is I very carefully drilled a hole exactly where I want it relative to the edges of the stir sticks. And then when I want to drill a hole in one of the cabinet doors, I just chuck this up against there and start drilling. For the drawer fronts, of course, they can't use this jig because we want the little latchy thingies to be centered. So I've made another little jig without this corner. But before we get to the drawer fronts, I want to take care of all of the cabinet doors. And that's it. Everything is dry fitted, including the trim here. All of the latches work. I've even glued in place the little pieces down here that's going to hold everything in place. So yeah, all of this is ready for varnish, which is on the to-do list for next week. I got a lot of stuff checked off the to-do list this week. That's pretty awesome. I got the cockpit locker here all painted and I got those through halls installed. I got those remaining areas copper coated. I put in a ton of time sanding and fairing the hull. I'd say I'm probably 98% done. And on top of that, I laid up a bunch of these fiberglass foam panels here. These are gonna be the inside of the fridge and that fridge is also on the to-do list for next week. This week was the last bit of my oh glorious vacation for now. Monday I start back at my day job, but I do think I've got some pretty cool stuff lined up for next week's video. That's gonna be burnishing all of the stuff for the galley and like I said, the fridge. And that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope to see all of you guys back here in the workshop next Sunday. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.